Hey everybody, this is uh, Dustin Ellis here. Um, I just I've been talking around with uh, Google Earth for the past at least two to three hours and um, trying to get a little bit more familiar with the software platform itself and the overall capabilities. Um, so what I wanted to do was uh, give a brief demo of uh, Google Earth itself in terms of you know the the more defined features that most people don't really know about. Um, you know, the stuff besides zooming in and zooming out and, uh, you know, trying to find Bigfoot um, in the mountains with some aerial photography. So um, what I've done here is I've taken some KML files and I've uploaded them into the Google Earth. Um, I extracted them from a GIS software system. And uh, basically what a KML file is, don't really worry about it, but it's just data that's been um, digitized and turned into... A format that we can actually view and see on the map. So um, what I've taken is Appalachian Trail. Um, I'll zoom in here in a second and um, I'll really uh, really take you on a good tour of some of the capabilities of Google Earth. Now as we zoom in a little bit um, I really want to point out that Google Earth, uh, Google's done a great job at creating uh, a software platform that kind of puts into perspective more things than just the two-dimensional atmosphere um, that we typically will get with you know standard Google Maps or anything that you'd view from a smartphone or a laptop. So when we, when we zoom in here, like I've said, um, you know, I've added red lines into, into the map. Um, you know, now guys in the military will definitely get a little bit more benefit. You know, guys like myself where... Um, if you really need those grid coordinates and you need to be able to reference them, Google Earth is obviously a great format for that. And um, you know, there's plenty of features in here. You can analyze the the elevation um, for particular locations along a route, um, and many other things that I'll get into. So first, you'll see that we have the you know the red line indicates the Appalachian Trail, and I've, I've imported five different KML files. So uh, the first one is actually a line KML, which we see here, which is the actual route. Um, and then I've imported uh, another KML file with parking locations and another KML file with all of the camping locations. Now these two down here are actually uh, a text and photo KML and a video KML that, I've, that I'll get into here in a second. So let's zoom in a little bit more. Um, so like I've said, um, I imported the whole Appalachian Trail uh, KML, but we're really just going to take a look at the the first few miles along the AT to get a little bit more familiarity with the program. Now, let's really dive into why Google Earth may be able to help you out more than something just like Google Maps. So first, I pointed out that we have the grid, the grid lines, and um, next you know, we can import uh, routes, we can import pictures, we can import text and even video, and even data such as spatial data layers to include things like if you were conducting a market analysis in a city, you could import things like uh, crime census data layers, um, per capita incomes, diversity indexes, unemployment rates, um, anything that you can find online uh, that, that utilizes data in a, GI, in a GIS can be imported as a KML into Google Earth. So let's take a look here. Um, one of the cool things that we can do right off the bat is we can actually go in here and we can right click the KML file and choose to show the elevation profile. Now what we have here is an elevation profile, you can see the red line and as we go through this elevation profile it will show us you know in feet on the left, I'm sure most of you people understand how to read this graph at the bottom of the screen but um, contrary to popular belief uh, as you hike the Appalachian Trail it does get uh, lower the elevation does decrease uh, at least within the first you know half mile I believe that most people um, believe that it gets you know higher elevation which you know I've personally hiked it I know what it feels like to hike up there it can be it can be tough sometimes when you're getting used to it but uh, it does decrease and this is one of the good benefits of being able to use Google Earth and so not only do you do you get to see the terrain in a to you know what you, you what you're traditionally used to is viewing the terrain in a two-dimensional format with contour lines. If you know most people don't even know how to read contour lines, 
but what Google Earth can give you is a baseline before you go out and hike or before you go out and conduct patrols or analyze markets so that's one really good feature that I've been able to point out is elevation profiles and all of this stuff could be printed off in report format that you can take on the trail with you so that's the first thing we can conduct a really good baseline so let's zoom in a little bit more you can really see the three-dimensional aspect pop out at you so like I said Google Earth has done very well at incorporating all this information in here um, software itself looks great so ooh, some of these other KMLs so one of the things that I said is that I imported a KML with um, all of the camping locations so what you can do in here in the Google Earth is click on each location you can view the capacity any amenities that are provided um, and even get directions to that location or print off a hiker's map for the trail now all this stuff is obviously not uh, procured by me it's you know all on the cloud online and everything where um, people can export it from their locations so as you can see here the Appalachian Trail Conservancy was uh, the contributor to this data for that KML file um, now one thing I like to report is that data online is never always objective um, so as you can see here the capacity 12 people um, as a personal testament from hiking on the Appalachian Trail I've hiked the whole Georgia portion you can definitely get more more than 12 people um, on the uh, in the Springer Mountain Shelter so let's exit out of that over here um, you'll be able to see that we can go in and add things such as um, you know uh, points of location or points of interest you can click on it you can add images text and here you see uh, some pretty cool dude standing up there uh, with you know the backdrop of the, the Appalachian Mountains and uh, right there on <laughs> the uh, the rock by Springer Mountain um, so that was me actually about three years ago um, it's hard to believe that it's been that long but um, that's one really cool feature um, so another thing you can do is you can in, import video links um, if you're looking for a little bit of humor or something along those lines to really uh, either wake you up or laugh that video is worth watching um, first one I could think of um, <laughs> but it, it, did, it actually did not occur in Springer Mountain it did occur in the mountains um, in an outdoor setting with maybe some substance, substances involved so there's that feature um, we can also add as I said you can add layers into this so you can add things such as spatial data layers weather things of that nature now moving along another thing that I want to point out is that most people believe that Google Street View only exists for streets which is actually um, contrary to popular belief not true what we can do here is we can go and we can take our little man drop him over there on Springer Mountain and it'll show us a uh, ground level view of what the terrain looks like now obviously this is all pretty graphically animated we still have our grid lines on there and everything but it is a good perspective and uh, you know being able to view what the train may look like um, that's you know our most accurate depiction so again it's just assisting with establishing that baseline and here you can see our view to the southwest um, from Springer Mountain viewing or orienting ourselves southwest so let's go ahead and exit out of ground level view um, and here we are back above the trail and let's go ahead and take a little tour here okay so like I said you can utilize this type of stuff for um, you know I, I really want to point out that um, it's very important to increase your your awareness of programs like this. I feel like a lot of people are very restricted in um, when you know when they go hiking or when they you know go out in on the town and they really don't have that um, that world view and a sense of understanding what's what's available, the resources available in order to more accurately establish a baseline, um, whether it be hiking or you know conducting that market analysis for business. Um, things like this can really help the process when you are trying to get accurate information and kind of uh, prepare yourself for the things that may lie ahead.
So um, that's that aspect of this. Now there's a few other aspects that I really want to point out. I think I saved the best for the end. Um, so without further ado, let me go ahead and um, pull up some spatial data layers and show you what that looks like. So let's get out of here. And we are back up. Now we're going we're gonna to zoom back in a little bit. Let me uh, reorient ourselves. It's going to be kind of fun to, to mess with. Um, okay. So if we wanted to add information, if we're conducting a business market analysis, for example, uh, or we wanted to see what the weather looked like, we can actually go in and we can add things such as crime analysis. Um, or weather patterns. So we'll go in here and first let's add the weather. So if we want to see what the weather patterns are looking like for the United States, we can very well go and do that. Now this is something that you definitely cannot get with uh, standard Google Maps. Um, I th my personal opinion, Google Maps is very good for, standard Google Maps at least, is very good for creating those KML files and importing them into Google Earth for analysis, um, as well as simple actions, you know, point A to point B, which is what most people, most of us use it for. But for things like this, you know, whether um, actually conducting strong analysis, um, this is where you want to be, Google Earth, um, and establishing that baseline. So, so I want to add one more feature in here, which is going to be our crime analysis. So this is what we call, um, you know, assessing multiple variables at one time. So here we go. Looks like we got a ton of information here, but what we really have is a few different things. We have the weather patterns, we have our grid references with our with our grid zone design, designators. We have um, our spatial data layer of which is a raster file. That's the terminology for it, which includes our our, our crime rates and our crime analysis. And the legend is right here. Here you see um, Blair Analytics. Bear Analytics, which is the company that provided this uh, spatial data file for crime analysis. And then also we have our five KML files that I already discussed that I imported earlier. So here you go. We can go in. You can really start to dig down and analyze all this information, whether it be you know, areas of high crime activity, um, you know, weather patterns, and you can even add different spatial data files on top of one another. So if we wanted to look at crime analysis as compared to, you know, if we wanted to compare high crime areas with high population areas, we could act, definitely add in both of those spatial data layers and really start to see, okay, what the trend is, what the relationship is between areas of high crime and areas of high population. And I get, more than likely you will see that denser populations, more diverse populations, um, will lead to areas of higher crime. So I, I feel like I did a good introduction to Google Earth. Um, obviously there's many, many other features um, that can be analyzed, but um, this is a first step. Um, hopefully you guys can see some more practicality out of this and uh, you know potential for future uses. Um, I encourage you to get online, uh, start doing some research, seeing what's out there and um, increasing that worldview uh, and being able to understand what there is, uh, you know, what's currently being used out there um, on the market that increase uh, capabilities. So and here it looks like we got a lot of area that is either burnt out or it's just winter, something something along those lines. Um, finally, it looks like I have one minute. We can actually do a time lapse. So if we want to look at areas, compare areas in um, Throughout history, let's find a city here. We have about 30 seconds left. So if we want to look at areas throughout history, we can actually do a time lapse. And we can say, okay, 2014, this is what we look like. Now back in, let's see, all the way, we can go all the way back to 1999. And this is what our aerial imagery looks like. So you can actually compare over time what the areas look like. Now I have 15 seconds left. Thanks for watching. I'll definitely create some more videos if anybody likes this. Have a great day.